A missile attack has been launched on Kerchatov city in Russia's Kursk region, Russian telegram channels reported. According to the report, Ukrainian troops targeted the atomic power station in the city with the HIMARS missile launcher system. The air defense system was activated and shot down four of the rockets. The remains of the struck missiles caused fire five kilometers far from the station. Some telegram channels have claimed that the strike was carried out by an aerial bomb, but it did not hit the target. No casualties have been reported yet. The Ukrainian side has not commented on the incident. Это сиди в туалете. Advisor of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Sahi Kuzan, has revealed details of several operations of the main intelligence directorate involving the Russian military. They include the recruitment of a cadre military officer, Daniel Alferov, who helped 11 military men of the Russian Federation to surrender and also to implement the blowing up of the Russian army officers' headquarters. This is written by analysts of The Telegraph. Also, the main intelligence directorate organized a sabotage on the Russian missile ship Serpukov in the Kaliningrad region. The operation was carried out by a Russian sailor who later crossed the border and switched to the side of Ukraine. The ship, a carrier of Kinzhal and Onyx cruise missiles, was at the Russian naval base in Baltisk, Kaliningrad region, and according to the DRU, could have been redeployed to reinforce the Russian Black Sea Fleet. The details of the operation were kept secret for several months and only in July, during a press conference, were the details revealed. The explosion on the ship was carried out by a former Russian soldier of the Russian Baltic fleet, pseudonym Goga, who had access to state secrets, the Telegraph said. Besides, after the missile attack on a children's hospital in Kiev, one of the Russian pilots addressed a Ukrainian chatbot, passing secret information about his unit. The pilot was shocked by the attack on civilians, which prompted him to cooperate with Ukrainian intelligence. He handed over important personal documents and other valuable data. Against this backdrop, the analysts at The Telegraph point out that the Putin-led Russian government is continuing its course of authoritarianism resembling USSR 2.0. The latest crackdown on opposition leaders and independent journalists only exacerbates the country's crisis. But despite these challenges, new opportunities for opposition forces are beginning to emerge. According to experts, support from international partners is growing and the exchange of information between the militaries is giving new chances for revitalizing the opposition. For example, successful sabotage and actions damaging the Russian army may become a catalyst for changes in society. It is expected that with increased international support, Russian activists and the military, dissatisfied with the Kremlin's aggressive policies, may unite. This opens up the possibility for new forms of resistance within Russia as well as boosting the morale of opposition forces. Four Russian journalists went on trial in Moscow on Wednesday on charges over their alleged work for a group founded by the late Russian opposition politician Alexei Navalny. Antonina Faverskaya, Artyom Kryger, Sergei Karolin and Konstantin Gabov all deny the charges of involvement with an extremist group that have been levied against them. Faverskaya and Kryger worked with Sodavision, an independent Russian news outlet that covers protests and political trials. Gabov is a freelance producer who has worked for multiple organizations, including Reuters. Carolyn is a freelance video journalist, he has done work for Western media outlets, including the Associated Press. 
As the four journalists were led into the courtroom by police on Wednesday, a crowd of supporters greeted them with applause. Addressing reporters from behind the glass, Artyom Krieger cast the case against him and his fellow journalists as a cautionary tale and urged journalists still in Russia to leave the country. Antonina Faverskaya spoke about hope and suggested that, everything that is happening now, the darkness that surrounds us, it is not forever and we will definitely see the country that Alexei dreamed of and will definitely live in a country where there will be freedom, rights, where journalists and other people will not be jailed for their opinions. Shortly after the hearing began, the judge ordered to hold the proceedings behind closed doors upon a request from the prosecution, even though the defense objected to it. If convicted, the four journalists face up to six years in prison. Thank you.